Welcome to Short Scale Modeling. This is part two of the FX North American Mustang Scale 1 to 24. In part one, I build up the engine block and um, get them ready to insert the cockpit. So I'll be building the cockpit um, in this video. And um, with luck, I'll be uh, putting the um, fuselage together as well. So let's see how we're going. So to start off with, I'm using XF21 Cockpit Green uh, by Tamiya, and this is um, not for the cockpit uh, back wall covers. Um, so any um, internal part of the um, model is going to be in this color, and then it's XF64 Red Brown by Tamiya for the gator at the bottom of the control stick. Now there's going to be a lot of colors involved building this um, uh, cockpit. For the headrest, it's a light color UA735 black rubber and deep shades of cockpit. Why it's called that color, I have no idea. It's such a long winded uh, title for a color, but it's quite a nice uh, black. Moving on to Revo Hub Color 91 Steel, and this is uh, the metal tone that I'll be using for all the bare metal parts within the cockpit. For the pilot seat, it's Revo Hub Color 46. NATO off. I wasn't sure what colour the seat should actually be, but I wanted a colour that would contrast inside the cockpit. For the grip on the control stick, it's Revo Aqua Colour 08 Black, matte black that is. And while the actual stem is XF71 Cockpit Green by Tamiya. All these little parts are uh, cleanly moulded, and I didn't have to do any major prep work to them at all so when you build them you shouldn't have too much prob problems um, again just follow the instructions like you keep on saying in previous videos that, and uh, try and work out the a sequence that's best for you um, I tend to build in a way that's going to save me time and um, I'm not changing columns all the time but when I'm editing the video uh, I edit in a certain way so it, it comes off from the actual in instruction panels. But as a rule, I'll have the, um, say, say this cockpit green paint out, I'll be painting everything first um, by the tiny little parts uh, before uh, I move on. I'm using Tamiya's X10 Gunmetal, and this is for the bulkhead that um, separates the engine compartment and the cockpit compartment. So this side has the darker colour, the gunmetal colour, and the other side will have the cockpit colour. For the inner part of the instrument panel, it's Tamiya's XF56 metallic grey. A lot of people do this black, um, but I prefer uh, a sort of metallic -y look to it, hence why I'll use metallic grey quite a lot for this, this sort of thing. Then it's um, on the outer part, it's back to the cockpit colour. So that's just at the border around where I put the metallic grey. And then it's uh, Mr. Hobby H28 metallic metal black. And this is for the uh, back panel that will be going inside uh, the instrument panel. Uh, I'm now using the same colour as well to paint uh, some little switches around the front part of the instrument panel. And with the same process as Revo Aquacolor 05 white. Again for switches and dials, and it's Revo Aquacolor 91 steel. This is for um, a container that sits um, inside the engine block. Now it's time to paint the dials on the instrument panel. This is the little black panel uh, that gets pushed inside. Now I've had to uh, use uh, my LED lights shining right onto this and uh, using my magnifying glass. So, the camera's not picking it up too well. However, I, I shall go over the colours anyway. So it's all five white for the uh, needle on the dial. And then I'm moving on to that set camera in red, and this is for the um, notches on the dial. Then it's 49 light blue for the um, horizon horizontal lines. So you'll need a small brush to do, but uh, as you can see, there it is there. It's Roughly painted, but um, they're so small from a distance it looks quite effective. Now I'm moving on to seatbelt. So I just got a piece of Tamiya masking tape here, 
and all I'm doing is uh, doubling it over so the um, two uh, tacky sides are stuck together before painting it. And I'm painting in a river up for 89 beige. Again, just a liberal coat over here, it doesn't need to be um, perfect. So once it's all dry, I just take the uh, painted tape and um, Scale one end with a little bit of uh, super glue and cut off um, a little tail end so you've got enough to fold over to the chair. And I do this five times for the five uh, buckle uh, belt system. And then once it's done, it's time to build the actual um, seat up. So, first of all, the framework is going in. That just sits in a couple of little recesses down, running down the chair uh, before it gets. Uh, secured onto the uh, back plate. First thing to go on the foot belt is the um, pedals and then the control stick. And lastly for the section across the seat. All, all these went in really well. I didn't have to modify any uh, recessed part holes uh, to get the pins in. They just slotted in quite well. Next is to put in the back part of the instrument panel. Now I had to slightly open up the uh, holes for this for this to fit, it was too tight and um, so I just placed my knife in and uh, grind it around the edge for it uh, to fit and last to go on the instrument panel was the coin stack there, there's a, a little recess just at the top for it to fit in and then the container gets fitted to the uh, bulkhead it was uh, difficult to fit, it's just because of the shape of it, the location pins are quite small um, so you, you're never too sure whether they're, they're actually in position or not. And of course you don't want to move it around too much and get glue everywhere. And now for the sideboard panel and that was painted in XF 56 metallic grey. And that, that was just the, the small uh, area areas that are around the sidewall. So then uh, moving on uh, to fitting the instrument panel. Uh, it just sits right in a group, shouldn't have too much uh, problems getting this into position. And then the bulkhead uh, that separates the um, engine uh, block uh, area to the cockpit. This was uh, a little bit more difficult to fit just because of the, the um, container on it. But there is a groove that runs right down it that it just slots into once you get it uh, in the correct position. And then it's for the main part of the cockpit, the um, chair and um, so forth. The, this can be difficult to fit just because of the shape of the floor. Um, it does sort of bend, but there is a, a rail to guide you at the bottom uh, to fit it in. Use that as a guide to put it in and uh, have the chair hard, hard against the wall. And it sh you, you should get it in line properly. Next to go in is the... I think this is some sort of radio, I'm not sure. Uh, the instructions are not too clear on this, where, where to put it. Um, they sort of suggest it should be um, near the top, but after looking at the instructions further on, um, I found that it has to actually go at the bottom here. There's a couple of boxes to be made up here, and they're painted in Rebel Aqua Colour 08 matte black, and also there's a a lot of structure here that uh, you have to make before you put the boxes on and it all goes on a frame which is painted in Rebel Aqua Color 91 steel and uh, I, I would suggest making this frame up uh, before uh, you place it inside uh, the cockpit you can uh, build it within the um, um, fuselage itself but it may be easier for you just to build it up first uh, before uh, painting it and placing it in in this case for the handles of this is uh, Mr. Hobby H28 Metallic Metal Black. So now it's time to assemble the boxes and um, they just fit on these squares there. If you're unsure how these ones go, um, don't put these particular two boxes on uh, until um, everything is connected. That way you'll be able to see exactly where they go. But the framework just uh, fits on top of the uh, black radio thing that was put in earlier and um, it runs down then steps down to where um, the other component uh, back of, of the fuselage as you should say. So you can see they are stepping down. Then once that's on the uh, framework to hold the boxes goes in place. Now the instructions 
I get more clear on this. Bear in place that it is actually the wrong place. But I thought I would show you this uh, because I had to take it off in the end and replace it. It should actually go directly above that silver box thing that's on top of the um, framework. So now I'm moving on to the landing gear struts. And this is um, Rebel Up Color 43 medium grey. And I'm using Tamiya's XF56 metallic grey for the banding that uh, goes around the uh, struts here. The landing strut itself is a simple construction. Uh, you have the option for it to be free and moving if you wish. I decided to have mine uh, shut off because it's going to be a static model, so uh, I just locked it into position. I did find it difficult to close this up, hence why I'm using a couple of little clamps just to hold it. And for the wheel, it was uh, just these two little caps that go on. You can either put these in individually or put them together as I did and just push the tire through once it was dry. And then it's just a simple case of placing the um, tire onto the uh, pin. And the, the, as you say, you can have it um, a free movement if you wish, or you can um, cement it into position. These are the coverings for the landing gear. Uh, what's unique about these is you have to uh, build the brackets to go into them. Uh, they don't come as one unit. So be careful of the locations of these, the positioning, because you, you don't want to find out that down the line they won't fit in. Here I'm making up a little joint piston system. It's for the, um, I think it's like an air intake brake, something like that on the undercarriage. Um, this has to be free moving, so be careful uh, when you're doing this. Uh, it needs to uh, swing from side to side. Because I'm doing the B variant, um, this next part is an alternative part, and it's uh, for the, the recon uh, aircraft. So this is for the, the camera um, lens cover as such. I'm building this with the doors open, but also you can have it with the doors closed. To save time in masking, I'm pre-painting this. So I'm painting it in Revel Aquacolor 99 Aluminium. Uh, the reason for that is um, it's just easier than try to mask off the round area uh, to not get the, uh, any paint on the clear part. It's also a good idea to do the same on the surrounding area on the fuselage as well, just so that you don't have to mask off. And because I'm doing the B variant for the recon, um, and I'm having to make my own uh, window here. Uh, there's no markings for it on the fuselage, but the um, instructions say to do it. Now the the clear part that goes in here is, is very large, um, so I, I took my my pin drive, then my pilot, then my hobby knife to um, open up the hole, but it didn't open it up as large as the actual clear part. It just didn't look right to me, so I opened it a good size, uh, then uh, placed in the clear part from the inside because it was just far too large in my opinion. And it's just to fit, uh, to fit the. Uh, the house and where the camera was set. This is quite difficult to fit because just because of the shape of it, it's on an angle and also curves. So you may have to spend a bit of time getting this in position. Next is the uh, rear tail or rudder. Uh, again, like the flaps and uh, the um, undercarriage covers, you have to place in the brackets first. I'm using Revel Hypercolor 91 steel to paint the um, frame where the uh, engine block goes. You don't have to do this though if you're covering up the engine block. The inside is in all, only the green colour, so it's only the outside that's getting painted in that. Now it's time to fit the um, bracket thing for this air, air intake. It, it says that it's on a little recess point um, in between the frame there, and then the actual unit itself, it latches on. This is extremely difficult to fit. You, you may have to spend quite a bit of time getting this right. Now it's moving on to the coverings for the rear landing gear. Again, this is where you'll find whether the brackets are in the right position. Now to put in the rear landing gear. This is a strange one. Um, it goes on its own location pin there. Um, but the nature of it, uh, the shape of it, it just looks strange how it goes on. Um, I'm not 100% sure of the positioning of it. I don't know whether it's correct, but I just got into a position where I think it'd be able to hold the aircraft. 
So now I'm placing on the other side part of the cockpit, which was painted in the same way as the other one on the opposite side. And then the detail rotor goes on. Again, if you take note of the brackets, uh, you'll, you'll see where they have to go. Now it's time to place the engine block in. You don't really have to do this uh, at this stage. Um, the instructions say to you it's a good idea not to have it in situ, well, in, in position as in cemented until you've um, put, glued the foot to half the fuselage together, um, then maneuver it into position. So I thought I would tape it on initially uh, before I uh, bonded the two halves together. That didn't really work, it was too heavy to hold. But the way I uh, bonded the two halves together, um, I started off at the tail end and worked my way down uh, part at a time to bond this, meant that you, you can put the engine block in right at the end. So as you can see, I've taken off the engine block and it's um, time just to uh, put the um, fuselage together. It's, it's quite difficult to put together actually, uh, because of the underside, you have all these moving parts that have to be aligned up um, onto the other half of the um, fu fuselage. So st start off at one end. I do recommend the tail end first of all. Um, place that in and then try and get uh, your other little bits uh, on. For instance, this is me putting in the other side of the flap, um, not the flap, the uh, cover for the um, undercarriage. Then I held the bottom half with colour clamps before I cemented the top half. And that's the process I used all the way down uh, to the um, engine block. And at the end, the engine block just uh, slips in from the bottom. Make sure you have the right way around. Uh, once it goes in, it will be quite difficult to get them back out. So I'll just uh, see if you can do that the first time around. And once you've got it all secure, uh, just a supporting beam uh, for the engine block over to uh, the main part of the fuselage. Well, this brings the end of part two, a little bit longer than I would have liked on the, on the video. But I, I thought it was important to get all the cockpit processes in um, before, uh, as well as the uh, closing up the fuselage. In part 3 I'll be uh, carrying on with the wings, uh, getting them ready to put on and hopefully installing them as well. So if you haven't done so already why don't you check out the channel uh, for any uh, previous builds. Subscribe to that channel as well uh, for uh, updates, uh, particularly updates for this build or any ones in the future hit that like button and of course you can leave a comment. But for now, thank you all very much for watching. Bye bye.